and I just got one more thing to say. How about them Cowboys? What's going on, Cowboy Nation and angry Cowboy fans around the world? Y'all know who it is. It's your boy, the Angry Cowboys fan, back with another video on our Dallas Cowboys. So if you're DC for life, and I know for life sounds like a life sentence, hit that like button and please consider subscribing to the channel. Yeah, ACF family, as you can see, judging from the layout, this is not going to be a regular Angry Cowboys fan video. This is not going to be the video where I give you some clips to listen to and then I give you my raw and uncut. Nah, not at all. This is going to be my raw and uncut through the whole damn thing. Let's get it. Get ready for the Angry Cowboys fans raw and uncut. I'm being keeping it real. They keep it real. That's real. People have been asking me to respond to the current news from the four-letter and three-letter networks about Jerry not extended Dak Prescott and allowing him to play out his current contract and the fact that Micah Parsons and C.D. Lamb are being brought into the same slander. So, here it goes. As we all are aware, Cowboys Nation, Jerry Jones has been dancing in front of the media during... And since the owners meeting, talking about the current status of Dak Prescott's contract. Locked and loaded for the season. Ready to go with less. The weight of the world now bears on the shoulders of Dak Prescott and Mike McCarthy. A feeling a locker room loves to have. I mean that with all sarcasm intended. Cowboys Nation. Since I've been a fan of this team, I have seen greatness. I have seen Super Bowls, y'all. I have seen confetti dropping on the heads of our boys dressed in silver and blue. Three times. I've seen this ownership get rid of the best coach the organization has seen beside Tom Landry, too. Exile because he got more credit than the attention-seeking owner that we got in Jerry Jones. I've seen an owner say that he can take the roster that Jimmy Johnson created and win a Super Bowl with it. It wasn't Jimmy. It was Jerry's ownership that got us those two Super Bowls. With that same roster, plus or minus a few, Jerry indeed won a third Super Bowl, cementing his belief in himself. Hindsight's a bitch because I feel that Super Bowl win with Barry Switzer catapulted his ego into the deepest stratospheres of the furthest galaxies out of the Milky Way. It showed him that it's my way. It showed him that my way is the highway. You can't be successful without me. My way is what got us from 1-15 in 15 to the damn Super Bowl. And in the Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, and Micah Parsons contract situations, the player may have all the leverage according to the media, but Jerry will find a way to force you to have to travel down his highway. I told y'all I had conspiracy theories about this whole situation, and this is exactly what it is. I don't have an inside track. I'm not at the star all the time. But I am a damn fan who spends his money on this team. A fan that gives this team the one most precious thing that we all have. That's our time. So no, I'm not getting my information from any type of inside source. This is just my theory on what's going on, y'all. This organization seems like a mob organization. Intimidation and strong arming to get their players to take less of a deal. Slander in the media and on the internet to make them look bad. Yes, the players do have the option to want to test the market or walk in free agency. But some of those players do have loyalty. To some of these players, they have dreamt about one day being a Dallas Cowboy and retiring a Dallas Cowboy. This organization doesn't take that as loyalty. They take that as leverage. We'll only go as far as Dak takes us. Extra added pressure from the owner of the organization that was certainly not needed before the biggest game of our season. That was an outlet. 
a way to place blame on a person you are going to have to pay $60 million in the upcoming offseason. Put that quote out in the media, let it circulate around Cowboys Nation a little, and when he doesn't get the job done, Jerry can say that he was right. Even if the Cowboys won a Super Bowl, Jerry would have been right. Jack took us as far as he could take us. When they allowed Tyron Smith to go to the New York Jets, I thought that they may be blowing the entire team up. But the more I thought about the situation, the more I thought to myself, they're going to this lens to try and make it to where Dak doesn't succeed so they could possibly retain him for a much cheaper price. Leverage. If the Cowboys go out there and stink it up, Jerry can then go to Dak with a cheaper price and force Dak to either take said cheaper price or test free agency. That's where the players saying, I want to be a Cowboy for life will be used against them. Micah Parsons said it too. Don't be surprised they used that against him during his contract negotiations. Anyhow, after Tyron Smith left the team, I thought it was a tactic against not only Dak Prescott, but if Dak can't ball, CeeDee Lamb don't eat. And if CeeDee Lamb don't eat, the offense can't shine. And that puts a tremendous pressure on the defense, a.k.a. Micah Parsons, to lead this damn team to be damn near perfect to bail the offense out. Complimentary football, right? If they can't get it done this season, then they all lose their leverage to Jerry Jones. I said it before, and I'll say it again. If I were Jerry, I would negotiate contracts with the help us help you mentality. We don't have $60 million a year to give you and then put a good team around you. We can't give you that and give you your pieces to succeed. We need your help in doing so. We know you can get it done for us, but we also know you need pieces around you to get it done. Would you take um, $54 million a year for four years? And we can then move forward by getting you the pieces that you need. Nope, that ain't it. Instead, Jerry wants to take the I'm not afraid of you approach. He wants to take the you don't have the leverage. I do. I got all the damn leverage approach. Then he wants to fold his arms and take his ball home and says, we're done talking. Let's go into the season as is with a $55 million cap hit all to try and prove he has the final say. Not only is he playing with these men's money, he is screwing up the morale in the locker room and the faith each player has in each other. He is screwing up the faith the team has in the coach. No player wants to go to work thinking, man, this might be the last time I get to play with you guys this season. Nobody wants to go to work thinking, well, shit, if they're not paying Dak Prescott, that damn sure ain't going to want to pay me top dollar. Jerry is sowing so much doubt into this locker room, he says he wants to win a Super Bowl. There's a reason why Tyron Smith said he made the decision based on the way things were looking in Dallas. Everyone sees this team now as being worse than they were when they got beat by Green Bay. You would figure any owner who wants to win a Super Bowl would add to the pieces that got us to the playoffs so we could possibly make a deeper run in the following season. Nope. It's Dak has to play with less. We're not going to put exceptional pieces around Dak, but we're going to expect Dak to play at an exceptional, if not elite, level to get us to a Super Bowl. We're going to expect Dak Prescott to give this team the water Bugs Bunny gave the rest of the Toon Squad in order to beat the Monstars. If he's unable to do that, Dak ain't it. Jerry Jones saw we didn't have a run game, then complained about us not having a run game. He saw that we couldn't stop the run, then complained about not being able to stop the run. He saw Michael Gallup's regression, but chose to keep him a cowboy. Saw Dak needed another threat, but did nothing to remedy the situation. As we contemplate moving on without Dak Prescott, I hold on to some glimmer of hope. Some have offered Trey Lance as a successor. Well, Jerry Jones didn't exercise his fifth year option, so now he is scheduled to be a free agent during the 2025 offseason. I truly felt Jerry did this so that they weren't contractually obligated to Lance if he didn't work out. I felt they would have him and Cooper Rush have a position battle during the training camps, and if Lance beat out Rush, 
He'd be QB2 moving into the preseason. They would only have Dak Prescott play one quarter during the preseason and then allow Trey Lance to hit the field and show everybody what he has. If Trey Lance impresses Jerry and Steven, the front office can feel more comfortable than letting Dak Prescott hit the open market. A part of me feels that way today. It all depends on Trey Lance's performance this offseason to see if we can move on from Dak with confidence. I remember Jane Slater said something about being around the Dallas Cowboys and they would handle Dak Prescott's contract around August. I thought it didn't have to be like August 1st or the first week in August. It could be late August after preseason. After they see if Trey Lance has what it takes to lead this team. If he doesn't work out, they're going to start negotiations with Dak and either trade Trey Lance before the end of the season for a draft pick or let him walk during the 2025 offseason. They are not going to spend that type of money for a backup, and they damn sure are not going to spend Dak type of money when they have a quarterback on the roster that can show he can handle the burden of being the Dallas Cowboys starting quarterback at a cheaper rate. So let me once again make this clear so I don't have people in my comment section calling me a Dak lover. I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. I am DC for life until the casket drops. I am a fan of the team and what the team represents. The team meaning the players, the grit the players have, the determination the players have, the want the players have. I love most of the players on this team and their abilities. There are a couple that I don't mind see leave, but there are a few. I question why would you want them to go? Dak Prescott being one of them. All I want is for Jerry to stop jerking Cowboys Nation around. If you don't have a plan to extend Dak Prescott, then be real with the fans. Be real with the media. Let them know that Dak is not your only avenue that you're exploring. Don't blatantly not give this fan base hope for a championship by doing the same shit that you've done for 30 years. For 30 years, your frugalness has hurt this team's chances at success. The culture you, Jerry, have established is cancerous, lack of a better term, and it has eaten away at this organization, and now it's eaten away at your fan base. Jerry, as I record this video, you are losing fans. You are losing fans' trust in this organization. You are losing fans' belief that this organization can win when it comes down to it. You are losing fans' pride in being a part of Cowboys Nation. You are losing fans' want to be associated with this team. You of all people know that when you lose your fan base, you lose your relevancy. You lose your continued revenue from merchandise sales, ticket sales, and ratings. When you lose ratings, you lose primetime television spots. You lose that, and you lose money. People in Cowboys Nation want to boycott you, Jerry. That doesn't say something to you. It's going to come down to a point where people in Cowboys Nation are going to jump ship and then you're going to have to deal with being irrelevant and behind Houston as far as Texas football and fan appeal goes. So, Jerry, it's about time that you stop pissing in the bottle and trying to sell it to us as Mountain Dew. We are sick of it. We are sick of you doing the bare minimum expecting the maximum result. We are sick of your face on the television screen instead of the damn coaches or the players. We are sick of your voice on the radio. We are sick of the headlines. We are sick of being the laughing stock of the NFL. Something's got to change, and it ain't the quarterback. The thing is, the quarterback can be changed. You can't. They say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I hope you're the exception to the rule and not the example. This has been your boy, the Angry Cowboys fan. Is Jerry and Steven Jones making it hard for you to be a Cowboys fan? Have you ever considered jumping to a different team? Let's have that conversation in the comment section so I can hopefully talk you off the ledge. If you're digging the raw and uncut content and want to help this channel get to its goal of 7,000 subscribers before the start of the preseason, Drop a huge like on the video. If you're DC for life and hope that this organization can get its head out of its own ass, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell so you get notified whenever I go live or whenever I release a video. I am a Dallas Cowboy fan for life. That doesn't mean that I have to be the fan of the Joneses.
I can and will support my team. I don't have to support Jerry. I hold on to hope that the right thing is done and these men get their money. That this team treats itself like a real Super Bowl contender and not just a marketing campaign. I hold on to hope by seeing reporters close to the organization say that talks are in play. Don't make me feel like an idiot, Jerry. Let's get back to winning Super Bowls and stop worrying about winning the ratings battle. This has been your boy, the Angry Cowboys fan, and I'm out.